With one last attack, Kirito slashed down and then sideways, producing a cross-shaped projectile that hit the dragon and turned it into polygons. Floor 7 had ended with a lot of mysteries. Lady Nirnir was saved, but as the crew had a chance to breathe a little at the beach resort after the boss fight, it was all the more of an enigma as to what the future floors had in place for them. Apparently, the fallen elves were also partly responsible for the cheating in the casino, working with the Korloi family against Lady Nirnir with eternal life. Kizmel was now a fugitive alongside Kirto and Asuna in the eyes of the Dark Elves. In just two floors, the quest would reach its climactic conclusion, and the PK gang working with the Fallen would only ramp up during that time, led by the man in the poncho. Kirto was now classified as a vampire in the game, thus could not comfortably step in light, and nobody was sure how long the effect would last. And all the more surprisingly, after the boss fight, both Lind and Kiba had come to talk with them, refusing Kirito to make a decision until the next boss fight as an apology for making a mess throughout Floor 7 in general. Floor 10, a milestone floor that featured harder monsters than usual, awaited the players just above, with Kagachi the Samurai Lord protecting the passage beyond into a world no beta tester had ever reached before. A lot more stories awaited our heroes on future floors of the floating castle of Aincrad, but this is as far as the Sword Online Progressive series goes for the time being, and as such, we are going to be jumping forward in time from January 8, 2023, as well as featuring a lot of more bite-sized information in the process. In February 2023, Konno Yuki was finally accepted into the Medicuboid program in favor of her sister Konno Aiko, both siblings suffering from a terminal case of AIDS that they were infected with due to a faulty blood transfusion at birth. March 31st marked arguably the biggest disaster of the Aincrad incident. The clearing of floor 25 came at a great cost. Each 10th floor featured a significantly difficult floor, but that did not compare to the spike that every quarter of the castle put the players through. The boss of the floor annihilated more than half of Aincrad Liberation Squad in the process, resulting in them abandoning front lines completely and causing a lot of pain and PTSD for Kibao. After this massacre, Kirito and Asuna broke up their partnership that started back on the first floor, as Asuna joined the recently emerging Knights of the Blood Guild, a separation that both Kirito and Asuna blamed themselves for. The newly formed guild would ramp up fast and make their appearance immediately the following floor of 26. The separation from his partner hit Kirito really hard, as after 5 months for the first time, he was back to being a solo player. A week after, on April 8th, he joined a small sized guild, Moonlit Black Cats, for some comfort and company. They were a school group who had welcomed an outsider like Kirito with open arms, who had kept his identity and stats a secret from them. Nobody in the Moonlit Black Cats really minded this, they had met only recently, and no matter how average of a crowd they were, it was known in Aincrad that such information was as personal as it gets. In the month of May 2023, Japanese government, or rather the Ministry of Internal Affairs' Kikoka Seijiro, who saw great potential in full dive VR for the future of his country, was in the process of recovering from the effects of the SAO incident. While plans were constantly being made and scrapped due to not being deemed safe enough to work without casualties, he also did his best so that full dive was not a dead technology following SAO. A lot had happened in the background, like the SAO developer Argus going bankrupt and being absorbed by Rekt to keep the technology and it's now less than 10,000 players alive, and the month of May saw the creation of the next gen full dive tech with additional safety measures, the atmosphere. By May 9th, the clearers had made it through the 28th floor against Vahila the Black Wolf, a noticeable slowdown after the events of floor 25. By June 22nd, the front line was marked as floor 30. However, it wasn't two casual months that Kirito spent with Moonlit Black Cats. He did support them throughout personally, but he still had a lot of sleepless nights grinding as a solo player, even coming across Klein, who urged him to ease up from time to time. But those two months would come to an end on that day, June 22nd. The leader of Moonlit Black Cats, Keita, announced that they had saved enough money to purchase a guild headquarters and went off to purchase one. 
The rest of the guild decided to head to floor 27, three floors below the front line, which was indeed safe enough to grind in order to obtain enough core to furnish the new headquarters. Due to the eagerness of one of the members, however, none of the moonlit black cats managed to escape a very common mistake that even players on the first floors knew not to do and warned each other about. Overconfidence, carelessness, blissful ignorance of a moment, they opened a chest that ended up being a trap. Sasamaru, Ducker, Tetsuo and Sachi shattered into polygons in front of his eyes and Kirito was the only one who survived the room thanks to being overleveled. He returned to town to explain the situation to Keita in an attempt to search for forgiveness. All he received from Keita was a bunch of swear words blaming the dirty beater for the death of his friends as he jumped into the endless void outside of Aincrad. In October 2023, floor clearing was already picking back up speed. October 8 had marked the clearing of floor 38 and on October 15, Knights of the Blood was deep in the dungeon of floor 40, fighting a labyrinth boss, ruthless warder chief, getting closer to the boss room in the process. However, a group of KOB members led by Asuna had narrowly escaped death against the boss when one of their members, Nautilus, had suddenly lost control of his avatar completely which led to the entire formation getting broken only to be barely saved by a swordsman in black rushing in with no regard for his life to defeat the boss. All Asuna could do was to urge him to take care of himself and look behind him in silence, regretting breaking up their party 15 floors ago. She also knew something that happened 4 months ago that caused him to act incredibly reckless as if he wished for death but she never had the heart to ask him directly. The boss room of floor 40 is found on October 16 and the meeting is held on the 17th. Nautilus, while a promising prospect, was left outside of the boss battle to re-evaluate his situation. Not much was told to him, but a dialogue between Asuna and the commander of KOB, Heathcliff, suggested that he had a severe case of full dive non-conformity caused by the nerve gear picking up his conflicting fight or flight instincts and thus not knowing what to do with said conflicting movement data. The goal of Asuna was to have a bit more time with Nautilus personally after the boss fight to work on overcoming his FNC. Like how Kirito and Asuna found a way together to overcome the FNC of a fellow player called Neza who suffered a lack of depth perception back on floor 2. She even went out into the grinding fields to find Kirito and ask for his opinion in the middle of the night but to her surprise found his take on the situation much more pessimistic than the Kirito she knew from the first 25 floors. She was still eager to help Nautilus despite Kirito's remarks and she would do so after the floor for the boss fight was cleared. This was never communicated to Nautilus on time. On October 18th, the same day as the floor for the boss raid, Nautilus and Yuna rushed to the aid of some players stuck in a dungeon with a handful of other volunteers including two from the up and coming guild Furin Kazan. While top members like the leader of Furin Kazan Klein were participating in a boss raid, these two were not accepted to lend their aid in the boss fight and thus joined the rescue attempt instead. As an official KOB member, Nautilus led the rescue effort. He held his FNC in chains for long enough, but all hell broke loose when an additional trap mechanic of the dungeon boss came into effect, leading into a flood of ads. In a last ditch attempt to save everyone in the room, Yuna used her chant extra skill to grab the aggro of the ads so that the players in the room would defeat the boss in the short time they had. Nautilus aka Nochizawa Eiji, who had invited Shigemura Yuna into the digital world in hopes of mustering up the courage to tell her how much he loved her, heard two sounds in those moments, as he was collapsed on the ground, begging the two Furin Kazan members to help Yuna. One was the shattering sound of the boss, Feral Warder Chief, and another from the opposite side of the room from the middle of the group of ads. The only item left behind was a glass of candies that Yuna always used to cheer him up. Later that day, floor 40 boss Bracken the Prison Warden was defeated and on that same day, Nautilus left Knights of the Blood and was never seen again in the world of Sword Art Online. 
November 2023 saw the release of Alfheim Online, a game copied over from the source data of Sword Online, practically an asset flip with the addition of flying mechanics in the world of fairies to reignite the full dive phenomenon. The New Year's period of 2022 was spent clearing Floor 5 from Fuscus the Vacant Colossus. In the following year, despite everything that transpired, the New Year's period was taking place on Floor 49, almost half the game cleared. But Kirito had another objective, an intel he received from Argo the Rat, an item that was potentially able to bring people back to life. It wasn't uncommon that quests in SAO gave you a lot of valuable information regarding other, more valuable quests, items and bosses, but unlike what Kirito had expected, he felt destroyed when he defeated Nicholas the Renegade. He had threatened to do whatever necessary to prevent his first friend in this world, Klein, from landing the item in his hands, who later put his own life on the line regardless of the previous threat to protect Kirito against the Divine Dragon Alliance, a reorganization of the earlier Dragon Knights Brigade also on the hunt for the boss drop. Kirito just really wanted to give Sachi a second chance, the death he blamed himself for more than anything. But all he could do when he returned from the boss portal was to throw the item into Klein's hands, who had waited 3 hours in the cold winter night for Kirito's safe return. The reward item from the boss was only meant to resurrect a player whose avatar shattered in the previous 10 seconds. It was only another rubble in the pile of regret on Kirito's shoulders who turned his sword to his first friend while blinded by desperate hope. Still on December 25, just 4 hours later, a time-activated message arrived in his inventory. A Christmas song recorded by Sachi, thanking him for the time they had together. January 2024 saw a lot of events. One of the two hardest floors of Aincrad being both a 10 milestone and a quarter milestone, floor 50 was cleared and Kirito received the one-handed sword elucidator as a rare drop. Later that month, he also received a unique skill, one of 10 available in the game, called Dual Blades, given to the player with the fastest reactions. This allowed Kirito to avoid the irregular equipment status when he equipped two one-handed swords on both hands, which normally would render him unable to use any sword skills whatsoever. But with Dual Blades, he would have access to incredibly powerful skills. Unknown to Kirito, of course, aside from the two unique skills, they were supposed to be unlocked after players reached floor 90. Around the same time, Kirigaya Suguha, Kirito's cousin and adoptive sister, started playing Alfheim online to familiarize herself to see the worlds his brother was always so immersed in. And on the side of the antagonists, the PK gang that were heavily involved with creating chaos since floor 2 officially formed into a guild called Laughing Coffin. Officially cementing the existence of the biggest PK guild to exist was undeniably encouraging for smaller crowds of PKers with varying methods of PKing. On February 14, a guild called Silver Flags was attacked by an orange guild, Titan's Hand, losing four of their members. They begged the crowds back in town not to avenge their fallen friends by snuffing out members of the Titan Sand, but to have them arrested as clearers had already started using the Black Iron Palace as a de facto prison. A certain swordsman in black heard their cries for justice, but his way of doing it was perhaps not the most ethical. Nine days later on February 23rd, the clearers had reached floor 55. After getting mocked by her party members, a girl called Shilika separated from her party on the way back. She got lost and her tamed monster Pina was killed by a monster in an attempt to protect his master. Right after, Shilika was saved by Kirito who was coincidentally nearby to hear the events transpire. After a discussion, Kirito guided Shilika to floor 47 on February 24 where they'd be able to revive Pina using a key item. On their way back, however, they were cut off by members of the Titan Sand. Their leader, Rosalia, a player with a green cursor, was the bait in their acts. Acting innocent but pushing players into traps, whether direct PKing through her guild members or sending unsuspecting players into a group of enemies beyond their capabilities to handle a monster PK. Hearing that their target was now chasing a rare item, that had them even more intrigued. But that was Kirito's plan since the beginning. 
hoping to use Shilika as bait while ensuring her safety to lure out Titan's hand and send them into the Black Iron prison. And in a game of levels, the stat difference between a top frontliner and a mid-tier PK guild was all too apparent, the damage delta all too large. Titan's hand could not even out damage the passive healing Kirito had as expected with such a large level difference between them. Titan's hand folded and were sent to the Black Iron prison that day and Shilika reunited with Pina. March 6, the clearers were close to clearing floor 56, however they failed at defeating the field boss that protected the labyrinth tower. Despite Klein and Kirito's shenanigans to try everything possible, none of their plans were working. Getting fed up with their attempts, Knights of the Blood Vice Commander Asuna stepped up and strategized to use the townsfolk as bait in order to defeat it, but Kirito was against the idea. The duo decided to settle it with a duel. Despite Asuna's speed, Kirito baited her to lose her focus by equipping a second sword for a brief moment, throwing her off her trajectory in confusion and landed a slash with his main hand instead. Luckily enough, Delaying the bait approach led to a discovery for a new strategy as it turned out the lullaby of an NPC was the key to defeating the boss by making it simply fall asleep. The Geo Crawler was defeated the next day on March 7th and the clearers proceeded to the floor 56 labyrinth without any more trouble. By April 22, the front line had reached 59th floor. On that day, Kirito and Asuna started working together on a murder mystery case that occurred within the safe zone of a town, which should have been impossible. A player by the name of Kainz was killed where the system should have prevented it. Kirito and Asuna did not believe it happened until a guildmate of the passing friend, Yolko, brought them to the monument inside the Black Iron Palace, where all player names were written with the ones no longer alive crossed out. And there was the name spelled out in Latin letters. Kinds. The duo were so certain that it should have been impossible that they even talked to the leader of the KOB for ideas, Heathcliff himself. Asuna had of course consulted with Heathcliff plenty of times before, but Kirito's extensive chat with him did leave some suspicions, but he paid no attention to it for now, they had a case to solve. And they certainly have solved trickier cases than this as early as back on floor 2. The solution reached them only a couple hours after the supposed death of Yolko herself the next day in front of their eyes when Kirito recognized the item destruction effect through the sandwich he dropped. That the item destruction effect and the player death effects are in fact slightly different from each other. Kirito confronted the supposedly dead Yolko and Kainz as well as the member they were trying to spook into admitting having killed their former guild leader with everything that they did so far back at her grave. He told them everything, how they teleported away using the item destruction as cover, how the Kainz they were shown on the monument was spelled differently and how they had already found the real perpetrator hiding behind the bush nearby. Grimlock, their former second in command waiting for Laughing Coffin to kill the three to leave nobody behind that Kirito had just repelled. As Yolko and Ko took Grimlock to prison, Kirito and Asuna encountered the digital echo of the former guild leader Griselda. Unknown to them, this was not the last time they would encounter Mirage data of players that was saved into an object by the ruling system of the game world, the Cardinal System. The murder mystery had come to a close on the night of April 23rd. On May 11, the Konno twins were following the efforts of the government planning a simultaneous attempt to break into the nerve gears of captive players and destroy all of their batteries. The plan seemed solid in theory but it was still a long way from happening to ensure the safety of the players. Konno Yuki and Konno Aiko went out to hunt in their medical VR world, Serene Garden, and met a new player called Merida. The next day, the trio dived into a new game, Asuka Empire, upon Merida's suggestion and started playing together regularly day after day. At one point, Merida was so amazed by Yuki's skills in VR that Yuki ended up mentioning she was not using an atmosphere, which her sister Aiko followed up by stating they were using quote unquote modified nerve gears instead. That was not the complete truth, especially for Yuki, but it was not exactly a lie either. She had been using a medicuboid, a little bit more than a modified nerve gear that was used to treat heavy patients that allowed them to not feel pain. The device also enhanced her abilities to a certain extent in the VR worlds. 
Merida, however, had a dream. She wanted to dive into SAO. The logins were sealed with an IP log shortly after the launch of the game and Nerve Gears were already pulled from the market entirely. But if only they had the IP of a deceased player and an available Nerve Gear, it should have been technically possible. Unbeknownst to them in fact, a player who went by the name Poo had already achieved it thanks to the assistance of a Korean crime syndicate. Visiting them physically on their birthday, May 23rd, 2024, Merida put on Aiko's nerve gear in an attempt to dive in before they could meet, but Aiko suggested they dive into Serene Garden instead, where they indeed find Merida, who had not yet found her way into SAO. But Yuki did not want her friend having such ideas to begin with. If anything, she knew the little time they had was too precious to throw away like that. And one thing she knew for sure was that sometimes you could only convey how you felt through a good old sword fight. Yuki won the duel and Merida apologized for causing such distress for them on their birthday. She offered to create a guild together, the Sleeping Knights. They would travel to countless worlds, find others like them and make the best of the time they had. By the time Yuki would arrive in Aelo in the future, she was the only one left from the original trio. By June 24, Frontline had progressed as far as floor 63 and Kirito was now in search of a new sword. On June 25, he ended up in a player blacksmith shop thanks to Asuna's recommendation. Little did both of them know that it was Asuna three weeks into the game that inspired the girl, Lisbeth, to not let go of her life on that rainy day. Kirito was not satisfied with the swords available in the shop and asked for a custom order, so they went on an adventure on floor 55 for a special ingot produced by the field boss, Zirfan the White Worm. However, due to Lisbeth's eagerness and not staying safely away, the duo found themselves in the bottom of a hole and spent the night there. In the morning, they found the ingot in the hole and rode Zirfan out of it. Lisbeth wanted to craft the best sword she could to convey the feelings she grew for Kirito during the short adventure, but while she did successfully produce the sword, upon seeing the way Kirito and Asuna interacted with each other, she bitterly accepted the fact that it was not her place and that the swordsman in black already had someone, no matter how much he and her were absolutely oblivious to it. After giving him the dark repulsor, she rushed off and started crying. When Kirito finally found her, she never told him how she felt. Kirito comforted her still and promised her that he would clear the game. By August, Frontline had reached floor 70 and Kirito had upgraded his Dark Repulsor to plus 40 enhancement level out of 50 available attempts and created another stressful session for Lisbeth by asking her to do the exact same for his Elucidator now. During this time, the hideout of the Orange Guild, Laughing Coffin, was surprisingly leaked by an unknown mystery source. The clearers formed a raid team for this event specifically and annihilated the Laughing Coffin guild. However, Laughing Coffin was also tipped on the incoming assault team and thus were able to pull up a formidable fight that forced clearers to end up actually killing members of the Orange Guild. Kirito too had taken two such lives in the process. Coincidentally, the leader of the Orange Guild, Pu himself, was suspiciously not present on the battlefield and was never noticed again in Aincrad after the event either. Sometime in September, a weird condition effect with seemingly no status icon befell Kirito. Before passing out, he barely managed to send a message to whom he thought to be Klein for help, but when he woke up, it was Asuna taking care of him as he had accidentally sent the message to her instead. She let her know that it was likely that his real body had caught cold and nothing more. Must have been a cold wave in Japan as Asuna woke up with the same issue the next day and it was Kirito's time to take care of her and he had already traveled to floor 58 to defeat a field boss to grab some ice to tend to her. On September 23rd, a popularity poll was held in Aincrad by one of the weekly newspapers reporting on the events and achievements that happened that week. The top contenders were of course the infamous Black Swordsman and the esteemed Vice Commander Asuna, but the poll also included the likes of Klein from Furin Kazan. However, when the results were announced a week after on September 30th, neither the favorite duo nor the katana wielder in red could hide their shock. Seeing this as a massive PR opportunity, 
Ayncrad Liberation Force, formerly known as Ayncrad Liberation Squad, who were trying to get back into the Clearer's team, had been very active with their voting, allowing the spiky-haired Kibao to win the popularity contest just in front of Asuna. On October 7, back in the real world, Sugua and her mother Midori visited Kazuto at the hospital, and Midori revealed to Sugua that Kazuto was actually her cousin. Floor 73 had been cleared for a couple days, but proper expeditions for Floor 74 by the clearers properly began on October 9. Almost two weeks later, the effort was still continuing. On October 17, Kirito obtained the ragu rabbit meat and had Asuna cook as a dinner later that night, leaving her bodyguard behind in favor of Kirito. The next morning, the bodyguard Kuradil challenged Kirito to a duel to prove he was a more capable bodyguard than the infamous Black Swordsman. However, the first strike duel did not even receive its first proper strike, as Kirito aimed for the weak spot of Kuradil's weapon, destroying it in the process, further humiliating him in front of a large crowd. Unknown to the parties involved at the time, the leader of the former Laughing Coffin was watching the duel and figured he could still rely on his old tricks predating the Orange Guild, simple manipulation by taking advantage of emotions and put his plan into motion once more. Later that day, Kirito and Asuna discovered the boss room of floor 74 and got a glimpse of its boss, the Gleam Eyes, before he ran out of the room. On the way back to their resting safe spot, they encountered a group from the Aincrad Liberation Force demanding their map data, which Kirito actually complied with, thinking they would not be stupid enough to challenge the boss on their own. Shortly after encountering Klein and his food in Kazan, Kirito once again realized he had made a mistake, with loud screams coming from the boss room. When they arrived at the room, they saw the leader of the squad shattering polygons with others in grave danger. Succumbing to her impulses, Asuna rushed in to save them, forcing Kirito and Furin Kazan to follow along. ALF members had already dealt a significant amount of damage to the boss, but it was far from a victory. The problem is that a haphazard retreat was the worst thing to do in a boss room. Kirito knew that since floor 1, which was why he had continued to charge ahead after DFL had perished. While he, Asuna and Klein stole the Gleam Eyes, it would not be enough for the rest of Furin Kazan to carry ALF members back to safety in time. He had no choice left but to draw his second sword for the first time in front of other players and use his dual blades to defeat Gleam Eyes. After all, the bosses were technically defeatable without a 40 plus people raid team and the main reason to do so was simply to ensure safety of everyone involved. But that safety had gone out of the window already, the moment ALF so haphazardly challenged the boss, followed by Asuna rushing into the room. Leaving behind all that care for safety, Kirito activated Starbar Stream, his 16 hit dual blade skill after staggering Gleam Eyes. Lucky for him, well the stagger period was not long enough as Gleam Eyes managed to regain composure to fully block his 15th hit, dual blades utilized both hands, so the 16th hit that came with the other hand was enough to defeat the boss with only a pixel of Kirito's HP left to keep him alive. October 18 marked the defeat of floor 74 and started the exaggerated rumors about the Black Swordsman using a skill of unimaginable power with dozens of hits to soloing an entire floor all by himself and nobody else involved. Seeing all those news the next day, all Kirito could do was cringe at the reports while all of his friends were laughing at him. On October 19, the KOB leader Heathcliff invited Kirito for a duel to either allow Asuna to continue tagging along with Kirito or for Kirito to join KOB. The duel was held on October 20, resulting in a loss for Kirito, however, featuring a moment that fueled Kirito's suspicions about the man who possessed the other known unique skill in the game, the Holy Sword that allowed him to use his large shield as much of an offensive tool as a defensive one. On a completely unrelated note to those events, on October 22, Argo the Rat got trapped in a flying log house on floor 22 with a cute dog by her side that she was terrified of. On October 23rd, Kirito was almost killed by Kuradil who was fueled by rage and post suggestions. Two other members in the training exercise were already killed, but Asuna seemingly surpassing the speed limits imposed by the carnal system managed to reach the scene before Kuradil killed Kirito. While Asuna did end up sparing him, when Kuradil attacked from behind her back, Kirito was 
not as merciful, killing Kuredil with a martial arts skill. Later that day, Kirito and Asuna took a temporary leave from KOB following the events and Kirito proposed to Asuna at 9pm. On October 24, Kirito wanted to properly marry Asuna with a huge gesture, however his plans were ruined by the fact that… well, the log cabin he wanted to purchase as that huge gesture had completely vanished. An investigation led to them to a tornado that carried them to the flying log cabin that held Argo and the cute dog Toto hostage. The log cabin returned to its place when the trio completed the Witch of the West and the Three Treasures quest and Kirta and Asuna got married and started their honeymoon and the Shuri days. The floor clearing efforts continued during that time with the last field boss of floor 75 being defeated on October 26. On October 30th, Kirito and Asuna stumbled upon a mysterious child called Yui in the forest. With no memory or proper player credentials, they still took her to the orphanage in the town of Beginnings for Clues, but none appeared. During their time at the orphanage, they were approached by an LAF member, Yulia, who informed them about a coup attempt in the guild by Kibao, having trapped her friend Thinker in a secret dungeon under the Black Iron Palace. Once they arrived at the place, they were cut off by an overleveled monster called the Fatal Scythe. As Kirta and Asuna tried to stall the monster, Yulia ran away to the safe zone nearby with Yui, however, that allowed Yui to remember. She was a system NPC, a mental health counseling program, who had gone rogue after being locked away by the Cardinal system itself. She had temporarily logged into the admin console hidden in the safe zone, which was presumably what the Fatal Sight was protecting, and activated the Object Eraser GM feature to destroy it, which had led to the Cardinal system being noticed of her existence. Using the already logged in admin console, Kirito managed to save Yui into the local memory of his nerve gear before Carnal system completely deleted her. Afterwards, they all safely returned, Yulia and Thinker extended their thanks to the duo. On November 3rd, Kirito met Nishida, an IT employee who was intrigued by SAO while he was involved with Argus's work during his time, who was now trying to enjoy life to the best of his abilities stuck in SAO. Going on fishing adventures together, on November 6th they defeated the King of Lakes with Kirito and Asuna's help, but that did not stop the bad news from coming. The front line in Aincrad was now floor 75, which meant a massive difficulty spike. And Kirito and Asuna received a message from KOB that they had found the boss room for the floor, with half of the 20 person scouting party dying in the process. On November 7th, 2024, the clearers took on the floor 75 boss, the Skull Reaper, and after an initial shock and a long battle, the group cleared floor 75 with 14 casualties. In the grim atmosphere of the room, seeing that Heathcliff had once again never dropped into yellow bar, Kirito decided to confirm his suspicions that were now piling up for months by attacking Heathcliff revealing he was the player avatar of the game's creator, Kayaba Akiko. He paralyzed all the players with the push of a button and came clean after the reveal. For his accomplishment of figuring out his identity, he presented Kirito an offer. The players were supposed to challenge him on the top floor of Aincrad, his holy shield against the players in possession of the remaining 9 unique skills in order to clear the game. But if Kirito were to duel him right then and there and defeat him, the game would be considered cleared and all remaining players would be safely locked out. Kirito apologized from Egil for always messing with him about ripping them off, that he knew he was using the profits to support mid-tier players all the time. He apologized to Klein for leaving him behind on that first day and for the first time, Klein lashed back at him, not accepting his apology in hopes of convincing him not to duel Heathcliff. He had no words to say to Asuna, all he did was share a glance with her and turn to Heathcliff, asking him to prevent Asuna from dying at least for a while if he were to not survive the duel. Heathcliff did not do the same mistake he did before, he did not underestimate Kirito, but Kirito did the one mistake he was not supposed to do. Activate a sword skill against an impenetrable defensive shield, breaking his sword in the process. But just when Heathcliff landed the final hit, 
Asuna for the second time as far as we know overcame system limitations and broke out of paralysis to throw her body in front of him to save Kirito, giving away her life. Heathcliff was stunned to see this effect with his own eyes, a power that transcended the system. But that wasn't the end of it. In a final desperate attempt after getting stabbed for good, as his life flashed in front of his eyes, Kirito resisted the system as well to delay his death animation by a couple of seconds, stabbing Heathcliff back. Kayaba simply did not resist or try to get away from the blow. Previously, he had planned to leave the world of living after his lifelong dream of a floating castle high up in the sky would be beaten. But now, now he had something else to look forward to in life. In that moment, both Kirito and Heathcliff shattered into polygons and the entire world of Aincrad sounded the game clear announcements and the players started being locked out. When Kirito opened his eyes, he was watching the fall of Aincrad above the clouds. And then he noticed that Kayaba had kept his promise. Asuna was right there, waiting for him. After the two back-to-back -back instances he saw, Kayaba wanted to have a chat with them both, talking about how he wanted to see the castle of his dreams as a place where people truly lived. After the two back-to-back -back instances he saw, Kayaba wanted to have a chat with them both, talking about how he wanted to see the castle of his dreams as a place where people truly lived and died. Shortly after, Kirito, as well as most remaining players, woke up on their hospital beds. The amount of data flowing into his senses, Kirito immediately knew he was in the real world, as the nerve gear could not simulate such details accurately. Later that day, Kayaba Akiko scanned his brain with his modified nerve gear and uploaded its contents to the internet. 300 players, however, did not wake up on that day. Asuna was among those 300. 